Okay, great. We are in middle of Torah Zion, called Ve'ele Mishpatim. Okay, and we are up to the part where this is, Rabbi Nachman does this a lot. Uh, first, after he explains the whole Torah, he explains the whole, uh, the whole idea, the whole concept clearly, nicely. Then what he does is he, he, he shows us a certain Gemara, a certain Zohar, a certain Gemara, a certain Medrash, and he shows us how this whole Torah that we just spoke about, how it fits into that. And, the, and every time that he does that, there's, there's a reason for it. It's not just uh, to show us how it fits into some Gemara. There's also some added uh, understanding that comes out from it, some added clarification that comes out from that. So he gave us this Gemara, this story, this story of Rabbi Barachana that... Um, that uh, this uh, this Arab uh, merchant uh, found him and told him, "Come and I will show you the n- mountain of Sinai where Bnei Yisrael received the Torah." So Rabbi Barachana recounts that he went and he saw this Har Sinai. He saw it was surrounded by these these uh, scorpions, which were which were big and white. They looked like uh, white donkeys, white um, mules. And at that point, he says, when I was there in front of Harsinai, I heard this batko, this heavenly voice that said, woe up, uh, t- to me that I, that I took this oath, uh, that I swore. And now that I swore and I took this oath, who will nullify it for me? Okay. So, and we saw the Rajbam that he explains that this oath is the oath that B'nai Israel will go into exile. Okay. So there's a regret that is heard here in this heavenly voice, this regret of Hashem for us being in exile. Okay, so now he shows us how all the concepts, all the ideas uh, that he, we spoke about in this Torah, how it fits into this, this uh, story. So he says that uh, showing me, the, the Arab merchant want, wanting to show me, showing me the Har Sinai, where we receive the Torah, this is alluding to the advice, the 613 counsels um, uh, that we received on Har Sinai. Um, and then the fact that it was surrounded by these, the, the, the scorpions is alluding to the fact that we said, how we said that the, the etzot of the tzaddikim, the advice of the tzaddik, which is, as we said, the seed of truth, the seed of holiness, it's, uh, the way that we are, through extension, we are connected and included to the Eitz Chaim, to the tree of life, which is the Torah. And that's the advice. The advice is the way that we receive the tree of life and we are included in the tree of life. Okay, The same way that a woman is, is united with her husband and she's included in the essence of her husband, so in the same way, we are unified and united and included in the Eid Sachaim through the advice that we receive. And the advice that we receive, the advice we receive is the mitzvot, in the same way as a woman receives the seed that she needs to manifest into a child. So that's what the advice is. It's the ability to manifest the Torah in this, in this world, in this world of, 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 of action, of asiyah of practicality, physicality. And so the fact, and we said that the Eitzot of the Tzaddik, the Eitzah Chaim, is surrounded by the serpent. The serpent, the Nachash HaKadmoni, he wants to, he wants to lead people away from the advice of the Tzaddik, from the advice, the seed of truth, the seed of holiness, Zera Emet, and he wants to give them his own advice. He wants that people should receive his advice, his counsel. People should follow uh, his his understanding and his perception and perspectives on creation, which is which is a completely uh, distorted one. Okay. So, which is really really interesting here, right? Because the difference between the the Eitz uh, the, the this tree of life, the holiness, the seed of truth. And on the other hand, the serpent, the Nachash Kadmoni, the Klipa, the difference is all about uh, the seed that you receive, living your life, 
based on a certain perception of reality, based on the perception of reality, uh, of the true perception of reality, the perception of the truth of reality, the perception of the Torah. Okay, that's the godliness, seeing all of the good that we are surrounded there's all this good, there's all this blessing. The light of the Ribbon Shalom is, 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 is saturating every part of our existence. Whereas on the other hand, the Nachash Kadmoni, his advice is based on a perception of reality of Sheker, a perception of reality full of, of, of evil, of, of lack, of fear, of um, lust, and of hatred. Okay, and based on and that's the perception of reality that that's in this chuch, that's the chokhmah of the nachash akadmoni, the nachash akadmoni in his chokhmah that's what's going on in his perception of reality, his consciousness, his understanding of how of how things operate, of how things work. He sees always he sees that Hashem is out to get him, that Hashem hates him, and that everything that he's going through in his life is 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 um is is is, is just an expression of that. It's because of that. And everything that goes on in his life, he says, oh, it's because Hashem hates him that, he, that this is happening, right? So that's the perception. That's the consciousness. And based on that, he lives his life. The advice is the practical application of that consciousness and the way a person lives, okay? And he is surrounding the Eitzachayim. He is surrounding, he's trying to lead Adam and Chava away uh, from the Eitzachayim so that, that mankind should receive his counsel his advice and should live according to his his perception of reality. And we see that always, wherever you look. Okay, this is what the world is full of. You have on the inside, in a hidden way, it's hidden, it's concealed. You have the counsel of the Torah. You have the Tariag Yetzut of the Torah. And the practical application of this consciousness of the Torah, this perception of reality of the Torah. Okay, that it's all godliness, everything is full of the essence of good. Hashem's kindness and Hashem's love is, 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 is filling all of, interpenetrating all of existence. There's no place void in any way. There's no place void of this, this infinite bliss of the Ribbon Shalala. Okay, and therefore there's nothing lacking. There's no, there's no lack. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no worry. There's nothing wrong. There's no deficiency at all, ever. And based on that, we live, that's the, the counsel, the, the Tariq Mitzvot is the practical application of that perception, of that perspective. And, and if not, and therefore, therefore, the way that we fulfill the Tariq Mitzvot is through this tremendous dveikot, this tremendous ex, this experience of this tremendous pleasure, this divine pleasure. And if not, so then there's something wrong. There's some disconnection between that, that perspective, that perception of reality and the practical application of it in the, in the fulfillment of the Tayyag Mitzvot. And that's why the way that we fulfill the Tayyag Mitzvot shows us if our application of it is in, is, is in the right way. Is it really an extension of that perception, of that perspective, of, of dveikut, of, of infinite bliss, infinite pleasure, divine pleasure. And then, and that's concealed, that's on the inside. And surrounding that, okay, all over, wherever you look, you have this whole culture, okay, this whole, the, the secular culture that is all living life um, based on a whole completely different set of perspectives, a whole completely different way of perceiving reality. Um, about, uh, you know that I'm Kochiv I'm the one in control, and and that there is the, that there is not God, and if there is a God, so then He's a tiny little whatever that is only there in order to serve me whenever I want. There's a whole bunch of uh, uh, corruption going on in that way of seeing and experiencing reality, and based on that corrupted perception of reality, they have also their whole set of counsels, they have their whole set of advice, their whole way of living life the practical application of that. And that's called the seed of Sheker. Okay, that's the seed of the Klippa. And, and a person who lives their life that way is, is, in, is in being included, being unified, and receiving the venom of the, of the primordial snake, of the Nachash Kadmoni. And so that's what this, these scorpions are representing, says Rabbi Nachman. They're surrounding Har Sinai. Har Sinai represents the Eitzah, the council of the Torah. And it's surrounded by these scorpions, which, which is representing the, the, the council of the, of the Nachash, of the, of the primordial snake. 
he says that they, they appear uh, as these, uh, these white mules. So he says that what does it mean that they appear as these white mules? That's alluding to the fact that the protection from the scorpions, their protection from the venom of the snake, their protection from the seed of Sheker, from the seed of the Klippa, from the council of the Sitra Achra, the protection from that is the Tzitzit. And we said that the Tzitzit has this power to protect from the, the lust of uh, immoral sexual relationships, uh, sexual, uh, immoral sexual connections, and that is the concentration of the council of the Sitra Achra. Okay, the lust, especially the sexual lust, which is a complete corruption of the dat of a person, as the Zohar explains, um, in, in the deepest way, uh, that is all about how much I lack and how much I am not good enough. Okay, and how much I am seeking pleasure in, in, in a way that will not bring to building the world, will not bring to a manifestation of Hashem's uh, glory in the world. Okay, that's what all of the immoral sexual relationships come down to. It's all about taking something that is to be used in order to create within the world a more, uh, to manifest in the world more of Hashem's glory and have children to the Ribbon uh, in, in a beautiful, holy way. And instead, a person is taking that for absolute destruction just to fulfill their own lust, uh, to fulfill their own desire, which is based on a perception, a perspective that pleasure is out, out there, that the pleasure in, is, is completely out there. And I need to give up everything that I believe in in order to find that pleasure that's out there, which is, which is absolute destruction. That's the, that's the venom of the primordial snake, right? They were sitting in Gan Eden. They have all the pleasure in the world. And, and he leads them away. He leaves them out of all of that to the darkest of darkest, to this physical world uh, where there's death and where there's sickness and where's all these problems. He leads them away. That, how does he lead them away? He leads them away in the same way that all of these immoral sexual relationships uh, and connections lead a person away from the beauty that is in a Torah household, in, in, a, in a house on the connection, a Torah connection that, that, that just builds the, the, and manifests the glory of Hashem in every way. Um, so anyway, the tzitzit is what protects us from that. The tzitzit is the tikkun for the eyes and the sin of uh, the, 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 the blemish of the eyes, the blemish of the holiness of the sense of sight is the source for all of the immoral sexual relationships and connections and lusts. And we see this in the Pasuk, that a person should not follow and should not follow after the lusts of a person's heart and a person's eyes. And we see also by Shimshon that when he fell into that, it says that his uh, that he fell in that he was led away by his uh, by his eyes. It was a it was a gum in the eyes. And the tzitzit is the word tzitzit itself has a connotation of sight, like we see metzitz menachalkim in in Shira Shirin. Okay, now let's continue inside. So Rabbi Nachman says like this, V'shamati batko she'omerit. I heard this heavenly voice, this batko that said, Oili shenish bati wo upon me, that I took this oath, that I swore, Peosh Rabbeinu Shmua, ala galut. Haino alidei tzitzit yicholin avo la'atza tzadikim nebkhinat emet, v'alidei emet, ba'im le'emuna kanal, v'alidei emuna, ba'a ge'ula kanal, v'zeh she'shama charatat Hashem yitbarach ala galut, ki atzitzit shem chamar chivare, garam kol ze. So he explains that he explains that as we started off the Torah, saying that the way a person uh, is meriting a redemption from whatever exile he is in, uh, personal exile or the general exile of all of Am Yisrael, an exile uh, of where a person experiencing adversity in something physical uh, or an adversity in in his spiritual connection to, into Hashem and the fulfillment of Torah mitzvot. Um, whatever exile a person is in, the way to merit the redemption is through emuna, through belief and trust in the Ribbon Shalom, absolute com- confidence, uh, clear confidence in the Ribbon Shalom that Hashem is with me. Within that darkness, He is absolutely present. 
and that Hashem is mechadish ha'olam. Hashem is constantly renewing all of existence. And each moment, everything is absolutely new. And just that aspect of the emuna itself, the fact that Hashem is constantly renewing everything, already shakes loose a person from the shackles of that, that exile. The fact that in every moment, everything is absolutely new means I'm not confined to what was a moment ago. Okay, and so that's the bitachon, that's the amun and the bitachon, that if a person uh, c- is connected to, he will be removed from that exile and he will merit the light of the redemption, wherever he is standing, wherever he is. And the, to merit the amun, Rabbi Nachman says a person needs the aspect of emet. A person needs to be connected to the truth because amun is only as good, is only as strong as, it, as its connection to the truth. And we said that emuna is the malchut, emet, the truth, is a tiferet. And the malchut only has, only, only has what it receives from the tiferet. And so as much, only as much as the emuna comes from a connection to the truth, that even though in the place of emuna itself, you are experiencing a concealment, and that's why you need to, uh, you need to strengthen the emuna and you have to rely on the emuna. Emuna is about, is about being in the dark, and trusting in the light. But the strength and the power of that emuna is only good if you are connected to the truth. Okay, the emuna is in the truth. And when your emuna is in the truth, in a true way, then you will merit that even though right now I'm, I may be in the concealment, experiencing the concealment, that emuna will bring about that revelation of the truth. But how do you merit the truth? The emet you merit, as we said, through the advice of the tzaddikim, and through the advice receiving and implementing the advice of the tzaddikim, a person is included in the Eitzachayim, which is the truth, okay? The seed of truth brings us to be connected and included in the truth, in the tree of truth, in the Eitzachayim, and through that, Mayemuna will have this power to bring the revelation of the truth, which is, in effect, the actual redemption. The actual redemption is that revelation of the truth. And so the tzitzit, he says, the tzitzit is the, the, the tikkun for that. The tzitzit protects us from the counsels of the nachash, and it brings us to that inclusion in the seed of truth, in the tree of truth, in the etzachayim, which will bring us to the emunah, which will bring us to the redemption. And that's why when he was, when Rabbi Barachana was standing there and he sees this uh, hint, this allusion to the, the tzitzit, right? The white mules. So he hears the bat call, the heavenly voice of Hashem regretting the fact that we are in, in Galut, we are in exile, because it's the tzitzit that will bring about that redemption. Okay. Vezeh uh, peyush ve'ele. כל מקום שנאמר ואלה מוסיף, זה בחינת יוסף, בחינת שמירת הברית, בחינת ציצית, המשפטים, זה בחינת כולו זרע אמת, כמו שכתוב משפטי השם אמת, שזוכה לעצת צדיקים לבחינת אמת, אשר תשים לפניהם זה בחינות קד יתחבר בה אמת. וזה בחינת הושבו אישה לאיש, כי זה איש ואישה הם בחינת התחברות אמת ואמונה, ובזה תלוי הגאולה. וזה יכול שיהיו תלמידים לומדים ואין מבינים, תלמוד לומר, אורכם לפניהם כשולחן ערוך. זה בחינת הגאולה של העתיד, יתגלו כל החוכמות כשולחן ערוך, כמו שכתוב מעלה הארץ דעה. So now after, that he, after he explained this whole Torah in the Gemara, Rabbi Barbachana, he goes back to the Pasuk that he began the Torah with, ואלה המשפטים אשר תשים לפניהם. And he's going to show us how this whole Torah is alluded to, all the aspects, all the bechinot. That we spoke about in this Torah are all alluded to in this in this pasuk with the medrash that he brought on this pasuk at the beginning of the Torah. Ve'ele, okay, and these are so the the Gemara it gives us and the the Gemara gives us a drash on this ve'ele and on and every time where it says ve'ele in the Torah and and these ve'ele means literally and these are so the Gemara teaches us that if it says ele. Whenever it says in the Torah, Eile, Pasale Tarishonim. When it says these are, without the and beforehand, these are, so it's telling me 
that what we are going to speak about now is disconnected from the context of what we spoke about right before. It is a, it's, it's somehow different from what we spoke about before. That's what we mean when, the, that's what the Torah means when it says, Eile, and these, Eile, these are. But, says the Gemara, if it says, Ve'ele, if it says, and these are, so it's connecting what we're going to speak about right now to what we just spoke about before. And it's similar to what we just spoke about before. So when the wording of Chazal, when they teach us this lesson, is, Ve'ele, Mosif al Rishoni. When it says, and these are, it's adding to what we just spoke about beforehand. So Rabbi Nachman says that this alludes to Yosef HaTzadik. The aspect of Yosef HaTzadik is the one that adds to what was. Okay, because Yosef is the aspect that adds and connects to all the Sirot beforehand. Okay, that's why he's called Yosef. Yosef is the one who adds to what was beforehand. Okay, he adds what was beforehand to what will be to the Malchut. He is the connector. And that's why, and so he's hinted to of Eileh. And the aspect of Yosef, we said, is the aspect of the tzitzit, which is the tikkun, the rectification of the immoral sexual relationships and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and the lusts. The tikkun for that is Yosef. The tikkun for that is tzitzit. And so the Eileh is, is alluding to the tzitzit. Hamishpatim, okay, hamishpatim, the laws, what is that alluding to? That's re- alluding to the seed of truth, as we said. We said that all of the laws of the Torah, all of the mitzvot in the Torah, is, the, the councils, the 613 councils, is a seed of truth. Okay? And so Rabbi Nachman gives us uh, another proof to this, another uh, point where we can see this in the Pasuk. Uh, in Tehillim it says, Mishpete Hashem Emet. The laws of Hashem are truth. Okay? And the seed of the of the of the holiness is called Kulo Zera Emet, the seed of truth. So that's what Amishpatim is alluding to. It's alluding to the aspect of the advice of the tzaddikim. Asher tasim lifnehem, which you shall put before them. Okay, you shall put before them, um, them in plural. The pasuk is speaking about man and women, the men and the women of Am Yisrael. You need to put. The, the laws of the Torah in front of both of them, because the laws of the Torah apply to both men and women. Okay, and so what is that alluding to? Being put before them, the plural them, men and women. Men and women is alluding to the connection between the Malchut and the Tiferet, which is the connection between the Emuna and the Emet. Okay, and as we said. And earlier we said that Emuna is the Malchut when she is unified and included in the Tiferet. Kadit Chabar Ba Emet, when she is uni- unified with the, with the truth. Okay, so that's what Ashut Asim Lifnehem is alluding to. It's this connection between the, the unification of the Kuchabrichu and Shechinte, the Tiferet and the Malchut, the Emet and the Emuna, which is what the redemption needs okay redemption is 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 all it is on it, it it comes about through that unification and then he ends up by saying bringing this midrash the midrash says on that pasuk that um you shall put the last before them which which means that you should make it clear in front of them the Midrash says that I might think that you can just teach it to the Talmidim. Uh, you can teach the Torah to the Talmidim even if they do not understand. And then that's it. That's enough. No. The Torah is telling us that you shall make it clear for them as a fully set table. You should spread it out before them as a fully set table. So he explains that this is alluding to the actual redemption. This whole Torah is telling us about how Emuna will brings to the redemption, okay? And Emuna needs Emet, and Emet needs the Eitzot of the Tzadikim, and the Eitzot of the Tzadikim you re- receive through Tikkun Abrit. But the focus of this Torah is how the redemption comes about. And so that's what this Midrash on that Pasuk, on the end of that Pasuk, is, is alluding to. Because when the redemption, when the Geula comes, all of the chokhmah of Hashem, all of the chokhmot will be, will be clear and spread before us like a perfectly set table. 
Okay, and that's what this medrash is alluding to. It's alluding to the clarity of chokhma, the clarity of the divine consciousness that will be revealed at the time of the geula, as it says in Yeshayahu, Malea haaretz dea, that the that the land, the earth, will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem. And so this is the end of the the lashon of Rabbi Nachman. And now Rabbi Nathan explains something that uh, on this Torah, based on what he learned from Rabbi Nachman. Uh, that is connected to what we just learned. Okay, and um, I'm just going to read the first paragraph. Uh, it says like this. Okay, so this is what this is alluding to. This is alluding to that this holy memory, the memory as the Torah speaks about. And the mer- me- when the Torah speaks about memory, it's a deep state of that, of knowing. Okay? It's a deep state of knowing and it's a deep state of connection, being connected to the knowledge, not as knowledge which is separate from me, but I am the knowledge. I am the knowing. Okay? And it's a very, very deep and holy state. And that's what the Torah refers to when it speaks about zikaron. Um and so, on the other hand, shikha is something that is, comes from the side of, 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 of klipa, of tuma. Shikha, forgetfulness, is, comes from the side of klipa. And it's a chaotic state of mind. It's a state of mind of katnut. It's a state of mind of foolishness, of rochstut, uh, where a person is uh, experiencing fragmentation and... and um, and so, so he explains like this. He says that we saw in this Torah that Fila is equal to, it is the same aspect as Emuna and Nisim, miracles. Uh, why? Because he said that miracles is all about beyond what is nat- natural, the supernatural. And that's what Emuna is all about. Okay, and that's what prayer is all about. And we spoke about this aspect of emuna that Hashem is constantly renewing everything. Everything is constantly being uh, brought into existence from nothing to everything. Everything comes from nothing in each and every moment. It's being willed into existence by the Rebona Shalom. And what that means is that everything that you can observe and everything that you cannot observe Everything that is in existence in this exact moment, right now, is n- completely new. In this moment, it was, it was created from nothing. And therefore, it, has, it is not a continuation of what was a moment ago. That's what this means. This state of consciousness, this state of awareness, is a contemplate it comes from a deep contemplation in this truth that everything in this moment is being created absolutely new and therefore and and therefore it has no connection it's not a continuation of what was a moment ago and all of nature the whole the whole uh consciousness the whole idea the whole perspective built on the natural uh laws laws of nature it comes from how everything is a continuation of what was. Yeah. Um, like, for example, I don't know if you ever heard of this before, uh, the butterfly effect, how a butterfly can flap it, its wings in one side of the world and can cause a whole tremendous effect on the other end of the world because everything that this is, this is the perspective, this is the understanding of those that go, that believe in the Teva, right? Those that serve the idol worship they they worship the idol of nature their understanding is the butterfly effect that everything that is happening is the effect of some cause and and so everything is connected right everything everything is cause and effect everything is a continuation of what was and something that's happening right now who knows maybe a butterfly flapped its wings its wings some other side of the world doesn't have to be even now it could be maybe some who knows some hundred years ago or some couple hundred years ago and that caused a whole series of 
action and reaction until this effect what manifested right now. That's what their perception is. That's what the 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 klipa, okay, of the teva of the idol worship of nature is all about. But on the other hand, the perception of emuna is how in each moment everything is absolutely new. And so it's not a continuation of what was a moment ago. It's absolutely being brought into existence right now. That's why the Balatanya says, uh, a person who has this belief, who contemplates this state of consciousness, this perception, there's no reason to ever be sad or ever to be worried about anything because you're only worried because you are, you are, you are living in what was a moment ago and believing that this moment is a continuation of what was a moment ago. But as much as you're absolutely present in the newness of this moment, then you're completely free. You're absolutely free. And that freedom is the essence of infinite joy and infinite happiness, infinite bliss and infinite pleasure in, 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 in Hashem's creation, in that connection with the Rebbe But says, says Rabbi Nata, he says that this is the essence of memory, of zikaron. And on the other hand, the, the consciousness of nature that we spoke about is the essence of shikha, of forgetfulness. Why? Because where does forgetfulness come from? Forgetfulness means that something was in front of me and now it is no longer in front of me. Something was a moment ago in front of me and now it is no longer in front of me and that's why I forget. Okay, so it's all about the connection to what was. It's all about the cause and effect, the action and reaction. It's all about the, how uh, uh, things are predetermined based on what was. Things are predetermined based on the mazalot the constellations, the energies that are going on in the universe that people believe are really in control when they are not in control. They are only an illusion of control, but they are all completely a vessel in the hands of its master, in the hands of their bunshal, completely a battle in his hands, in his will. But that's what that consciousness brings. That's what forgetfulness is all about. It's about something that was and now isn't, and therefore I'm forgetting. Okay, it's all about being connected to what was. It's the connection of the cause and effect, the action and reaction. Whereas memory, zikaron, but that deep zikaron. It's not just zikaron that people understand, oh, I just remember something that was. The deep zikaron is that in this moment, I have a state of knowing where all knowledge is clear and in front of me. Like we spoke about in this Torah, it's like a set table. It's spread before me like a set table, absolutely clear and known to me. That comes from the Amuna consciousness. That comes from knowing that Hashem is, con that everything is in this present moment is absolutely new, willed into existence by the Ribbon Shalom. And tomorrow we're going to see a beautiful insight based on this uh, Chiddush, on this understanding that we just, that we just spoke about now. Okay. Of course. Thank you.